What is up you guys, this is All Day and Day 1 on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you another Defiance 2050 video. This one's basically going to be about what classes you should choose at the very start of the beginning or very start of the game. So you do have four different classes you can choose from. You have Assault, Assassin, Combat Medic, and the... Um, I just completely forgot what it was. Assault, Assassin, and Combat Medic, and Guardian. So you have those four classes at the very beginning. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and show you what the Assault is, or the, the um, abilities that the Assault has. I won't be going through any gameplay for it, it's just going to show you the abilities, so that way you can kind of get an idea of what you want to use at the very beginning. Because you only do get to choose one out of the four classes, and then you have to unlock the other classes in the game. So I would want, I would hope this would help you guys, you know, decide on what you want to choose. So for the Assault, you get Sprint, which is basically Blur back on Defiance, the original Defiance. What it does is it increases your movement speed by 75%, and then when you level it up, you can go up to 10 second duration. And then the next one, you have these three different perks. You have Quick Reload, which lets you reload faster while you're sprinting, and then it also goes all the way up to 30% faster reload speed while reloading or sprinting, or probably higher. Sometimes it skips percentages. And then, um, oh yeah, it would be probably 50% because it goes to 5. And then for recharge, on kill, you recharge your abilities. And then it obviously would cut uh, a certain percentage depending on how many points you put into it. But there's a 5 second cooldown on this. And then the next one is Amped. It increases the recharge rate of your self-revive. So uh, whenever you die, whenever you go down, you have self-revive. And then having this... It just increases or decreases the amount of time that it takes for you to have your self-revive come back. And then the next one, you have two different abilities you can choose. You have Super Melee and you have Healing Stim. Super Melee, you, let you do more damage, more melee damage, the more points you put into this. The next one, Healing Stim, heals you and it repairs your shield back to full anytime you use this, which is very useful, especially if you're a solo player. Healing Stim is going to be really useful to have. And then Shotgun Focus and Assault Dampen and Grenade Accelerate are your three next abilities or next perks you have. So Assault Dampen, what it does is says higher accuracy with assault rifles and submachine guns. So you get more accuracy for those two specific weapons. So this class is more focused on shotguns, assault rifles, and SMGs. With shotguns, you have a reduced fall off on combat, sawed off, and pump shotguns. So you get a 5% reduction at the beginning, and then it just stacks up to about maybe 25%. And then Grenade Accelerate, with this, it reduces the cooldown of your grenade. So you'd be able to use your grenades more often versus having to wait, like, I think it's like 30 seconds to use your grenade. And then the next three perks, you have Dodge, Rolling Reload, and Scavenge. So Dodge, is says chance to not take damage from an attack when enemy is far away. So you basically, you don't have to tap circle to dodge out of the way. You would have a chance of actually dodging bullets or just damage in general. So like rockets and whatnot. But it is a chance. It's not guaranteed every time. So rolling reload, it says performing all a roll reloads a percentage of your weapon clip. So that's when you double tap circle or double tap B. You double tap your crouch button pretty much. And then you reload a certain amount of um, percentages into your, your clip. And then scavenge, all you do is you basically pick up ammo, or on kill, you get ammo back to your reserve, to your ammo. So you don't have to actually go up to the enemy's body to pick up the, the ammo. Sometimes they drop it, sometimes they won't. But whenever you get a kill with the ammo, or with the, your weapons, then you get, you get ammo back. And then the last two perks are close combat and concussion blast. So close combat increases damage at close range for 10 seconds, but it doesn't affect your melee attacks. So this is good for shotguns. If you if you like to use shotguns, this would probably be really useful. Even SMGs are really good with um, close range combat. So those two I would highly recommend. If you are focusing on those two, I would recommend this one. Concussion Blast. Stun enemies in, a, in an area around you slows by 50% in PvP instead. Whenever you're in PvP, it only slows them. It doesn't stun them. Um, this would be good when there's a bunch of enemies on you guys. If you are focused on trying to help your team out more than, I guess, putting out a lot of damage. 
then Concussion Blast would definitely help out when there's a lot of enemies surrounding you and your allies because you guys can get overwhelmed pretty easily. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the Assault class, so we're going to go ahead and look at the Assassin. Alright, so now with the Assassin, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the abilities. So with the Assassin, you get Stealth. And with Stealth, it just makes you invisible for 10 seconds, your first attack reveals you, and you deal extra damage for 3 seconds. And then when you rank it up, you get more damage. So I believe it would go up to 100% extra damage when you come out of Stealth, or when you deal the first hit with Stealth. And then the next three abilities you get is Eviscerate, Evasive Maneuvers, and Stalk. So Eviscerate, it says on critical hit, cause the enemy to bleed, dealing additional damage for 3 seconds, cooldown is 20 seconds, and then you can increase the damage of the bleed by, well it's at 100%, so I'm not exactly sure if it'll go every 100, or 25, or 50, or 10, but it does start at 100% bleed damage. And then the next one, Evasive Maneuvers, performing a roll gives you a buff that increases your damage for 5 seconds. You get extra damage, well you start off with 4% extra damage, and it is a 20 second cooldown. And then for Stalk, increases movement speed temporarily on stealth activation, 5 second duration, and then you get 10% faster, and then it increases for every 5 points, or every perky point into it. The next one is going to be Mark. So these two are your activation skills. So with a mark, marks an enemy increasing damage target for all sources for 10 seconds. And it's not just for you, it's for, I'm pretty sure this also affects your allies because I did see, a, I did notice that someone did put a mark on an enemy and um, they, I was able to, I think I was able to do more damage, but I'm not 100% sure about that. All I know is when you mark an enemy, you do more damage. And then you have Biotoxin, applies a damage over time effect to enemies shot, 5 second duration. If an enemy dies while affected, it spreads to nearby enemies. So that is good for like crowd control, not crowd control, but AoE type of damage. This one, Mark, would be really useful for like boss fights and whatnot. You have the next ones, next three, you have Sniper Recovery, Pistol Empower, and Hunt. So Sniper Recovery... It obviously is for your sniper and it says increases re recoil recovery on your sniper rifle so that means every time you shoot your recoil just goes right back to where or your sniper crosshairs goes back to where you shot at the higher that um your the rate is pretty much pistol and power pistols deal increased damage at close range and then this means you do more damage obviously but you get four you start off with four percent and then you increase more and then you have Hunt. On critical kill, speed up reloads for 5 seconds. So when you get a kill, you get, or it has to be a crit, so you have to hit the enemy's weak spots. Those are the only crit spots that you can hit, or that would actually work. So it generally wouldn't be too hard to hit crit spots because it, mainly the assassin focuses on hitting enemies' critical or weak spots. And snipers are meant to normally hit crit spots as well as pistols. And then on this though, it is a 20 second cooldown though. The next three abilities or perks you have are Scoundrel, Devastation, and Execute. So with Scoundrel, it says you deal increased damage when attacking enemies from behind. So when you're behind the enemy, you do a lot more damage. Especially if you can get a critical on them, then you'll do even more damage. Devastation, critical hits have a chance to stun enemies for 3 seconds. And this is actually really nice to have. Um, I don't think it would necessarily work on all bosses, but it does work on um, elite type enemies, the enemies, the big enemies pretty much. And then you have Execute. Enemies below 30% health take additional damage. So I would highly recommend using Execute because when it comes down to the bosses, like if you're fighting the Volge Arc, uh, if you're doing the um, Arc Fall against the Volge Arc Fall, and you have to fight the, the final boss at the major one, the major Arc Fall, this is going to be super, super, super good to have, especially if you have a combat medic buffing you, that I would highly recommend using Execute. And then you have Hidden Blade. With Hidden Blade, you basically spawn out a sword, and the Assassin's the only class that can use a sword. There's no weapons, no sword weapons that you can use. But I did hear that there were a sword uh, prototype that you can use, that you can have. So there's probably that as well, but all I know for sure is the Assassin does is able to spawn out a hit on um, a sword and it is a 60 second cooldown until you can spawn out another one 
and then big bang you have it says pull out and equip a charged sniper charging uses more ammo and does more damage ammo depletes over time and it lasts for 10 seconds at first and then it just goes up in time when you put more po more points into this perk or this ability so for me i feel like the sniper is definitely the top dps if you're looking for a class that does high amounts of weapon dps that focuses on crits then i would highly recommend the assassin then if not then i mean the assassin will still be a fun class to play as but this is definitely the class that will put out the most damage so now we're going to go ahead and look over the guardian all right so now we have the guardian so i'm going to be showing you both guardian and combat medic because i have both classes unlocked on my main account or my main character so with the guardian the guardian is more so like a tanky type of class they well, I'll just explain, I'll show you what each ability does and then kind of explain it after. So the Guardian gets the barrier, creates a wall in front of you that blocks damage. So it kind of works the same way that um, the Titan does on Destiny 2, how you can spawn a shield in front of you. It blocks everything, but sometimes it seems like enemies can still shoot um, or they can throw grenades through it if you're standing near it. But if you're kind of a little further behind it, then the bent the the grenades just bounce back but the barrier is really useful it's really nice to have especially if you can get yourself kind of in a your your back blocked like in a wall and then you put this in front of you and then you can shoot through it as well so it's really nice and then next you have for the next three you have health boost you have energize and you have reflect so health boost what it does is it whenever you get a kill you increase the amount of health you get and it stacks up 15 for 15 seconds and it stacks up to five times so with each kill you get one percent per stack and then every time you get one kill it'll keep stacking up so you can have a total of five uh, five percent health because it stacks up to five times and the next one for energize taking damage recharges your ego powers and it's a five second cooldown and your ego powers are the ones in the big boxes so your barrier bolster taunt and all that so anytime you take damage you have to wait obviously five seconds for it to do it again but it recharges your cooldowns for those abilities which is really nice i find it to be the mo the one that's worth using more um, then you have Reflect. Reflect is a really nice ability to, I would say, for like somewhat DPS type classes, if you're trying to play more DPS as a Guardian, because what it does is it deflects or reflects damage back to your enemies. And as you can see, it reflects 4% of the damage back to the enemy. So it's not going to be a lot at first, but I'm pretty sure it'll stack up to maybe like 20% eventually, unless you get to 5 points. But it's a it's not bad if you are more more focused on doing more damage as a guardian so now for the two perk points you have you have or two abilities you have bolster and you have taunt so bolster you gain vitality total max health armor and shields and take 50 percent less critical damage for five, 15 seconds so bolster i would say bolster is a really good um ability to use if you're doing pvp because you take much less critical damage and if you're fighting let's say an assassin they're focused on crits so having this active they aren't they're not going to be doing a lot of damage to you and you'll be able to you know take them down a little bit easier because they just can't do damage and then you have taunt send out a signal causing all nearby enemies to attack you decreases enemy damage by 25 percent for five seconds in pvp so taunt is going to be really good for PvE um, in PvE cases. Even in PvP, it's really good because you're decreasing the enemy's damage by 25% if they're nearby. But in PvE, when you're doing, let's say, let's say you're doing harder content. Like right now, you can play any class and do any content easily. But if you're going to be doing like hard mode of the missions, it's probably going to require a, a tank in it. Or even Alcatraz might require a decent tank with taunt. So taunt would definitely be a very useful ability to have just so you can take the aggro off of your allies and then you'd be the one taking all the aggro and then for the next three you have martyr rage and heavy hitter so with martyr you have on it says on barrier activate decrease incoming damage to yourself and nearby friendly units so this is going to be a nice buff for defense like a defensive buff 
to you and your allies. So that way you guys get a defense buffed in um, whenever you activate your ability, your barrier ability. And then you have Rage. When you drop below 50% vitality, meaning your max health, armor, and shields, you deal additional damage. So you, the more points you put into it, the more damage you'll do. But for me, I kind of don't think this would be a good perk to focus on or to put any points into. Because that's not you're not really getting much damage bonuses from anything else. So um, I wouldn't really focus on putting anything in Rage. Now, if Rage was put into the Assassin, then this might be a really good ability or really good perk to focus on. And then you have Heavy Hitter. On Rescue Kill, gain a buff that increases your damage and threat generation for 5 seconds and has a 20 second cooldown. So I would probably go with Heavy Hitter if you are focused on being a tank, just because you are getting increased damage and your threat is increasing and rescue kill what rescue kill is is when an enemy is targeting your allies and they're just you know they're constantly shooting at them but you kill that enemy once you kill that enemy you get the, you get a thing called rescue kill and that's when heavy hitter will activate if you have it active the next three perks are shrug off endurance and second life so Shrug Off basically lets you take reduced, not reduced damage from explosives, but you reduce the um, radius of explosives that come to you. So let's say you're fighting someone that's a demolitionist in PvP. The demolitionist focuses on explosives. And let's say they have something like Big Boomer, where it has a huge radius for a grenade launcher. It, this would pretty much reduce the, um, the radius of Big Boomer. It won't hit you, but if you have allies near you, it'll hit them. But So you'll be safe depending on how close or how far the, um, the explosives are from you. And then Endurance, it says Endurance, you gain a buff that reduces damage each time you are stacked. And one second duration and three stacks max. So Endurance reduces damage each time you, yeah, so each time you are attacked, so anytime you take damage, or if you're just getting shot at or whatever, you, you gain endurance. So this might be a really useful one because it's going to be pretty constant. And there's no cooldown timer on it is either. So this is, you're always going to have three stacks of this. And depending on how many, how many perk points you put into it, you'll have that much more of, uh, you know, reduced damage. And the next one, you have second life. If you would die, so if you get killed, you basically don't die you have one health left and you're immune to all damage for five seconds so within that five seconds you might want to have hope you have a combat medic or something with you because as soon as those five seconds are up which is going to be pretty quick it's you're going to get killed and um, it is a 300 second cooldown unfortunately what i think what would make second life a little bit better is if you start regenerating health um back like you get go up to like 50 percent health instantly as soon as you go down to one health or something because that kind of seems pretty pretty pointless to me if you are immune and you don't have a way to heal yourself. Next you have for the last ones you have steadfast. You take 50% reduced damage and 20 make and you move 25% slower anytime you activate this and it's a 40 sec, 45 second cooldown. So this is nice for like a tank because you don't really need to move around as much um, and you can reduce a lot of damage coming to you. So you taunt the enemies and then you pop steadfast you'll be taken you'll be able to eat up all the all the damage and then next one you have shockwave damages and stuns enemies in line in front of you slows by 50 percent in pvp so this would be a really good ability if you're more focused on dps and you're more focused on um i guess pvp as well even in pvp steadfast would be a really good one to use as well if you're playing like a control type of game or yeah control um mode i don't remember exactly what they they're called what each mode was but there is a mode in pvp where it's like control where you have to go and capture certain areas so steadfast would be good in there but just team deathmatch in general shockwave would probably probably be really good so the last class we're going to go over is going to be the combat medic so with the combat medic this is basically like your healing and your support type class so you do get a healing bot, and your healing bot, it doesn't heal you very much like the BMGs used to back in the, uh, on the original Defiance, but um, it, does, it does heal you still. So 
the BMG or the healing box, it'll heal you and your nearby allies, and it lasts for 20 seconds if you get it up that high. I think it's a 10 second duration, then it goes to 15, then 20. So the next thing we're going to look at are your abilities or your perks. So you have Recover, Savior, and Motivation. So Recover, it says, reduces a cooldown duration of self-revive each time your healing bot heals a friendly unit. And then, so that means if you already use your self-revive, then you'd have to rely on your, your, your cooldown timer to be reduced, which can happen from your healing bot. Anytime your healing bot heals multiple enemies, you reduce the timer for your, your self-revive, making it more useful for you so that way if you do go down, you could use your self-revive again pretty quicker or pretty much a little bit faster. Savior, it's not bad, but you do need to be in a group for this. You can't, you can't be by yourself. You have to be in a group or you don't necessarily have to be in a group, but you have to revive someone nearby. So the way it works is reviving another player grants you a buff, both a buff that decreases incoming damage for 10 seconds. So both of you get reduces incoming damage by uh, 4% at the beginning. But um, like I said, you have to you have to revive someone. It doesn't just happen automatically. And then motivation. When you kill an enemy, give yourself and nearby friendly units increased reload speed for five seconds. It's a 30 second cooldown. So it's not bad. I, I just put a few points into it because, you know, having reload speed is going to be pretty nice. Um, it does come down to, like, you know, um, putting out more damage or whatnot because of the reload time. The next thing is your two perks. You have Protection Spike and Inspire. So Protection Spike is a, it's basically a defense buff. So it's a stationary spike that decreases incoming damage to all nearby players for 15 seconds, 50 second cooldown. It's not that big of a radius though, just to keep in mind. It's a, uh, I would want to say it's like a 10 meter radius all around. So um, you'd have to be within the the spike to get this to get this um, defense buff. And then you have Inspire, increases damage done by yourself and all units for 10 seconds. And then you get up to 10% additional damage when you stack it all the way up to three. Now, the thing is with this is it's just like the damage spike. You have to have the enemy or your nearby allies around you when you use it. Otherwise, they're not going to be getting the buffs. And then light machine gun dampen, pistol tactician, and bot supplier. So light machine gun dampen only increases the light machine gun's accuracy. Pistol tech tactician increases the critical damage you can deal with pistols. And then bot supplier re increases the amount of ammo they, your bot can replenish whenever you're being healed by the bot. Hasten or hasten, one for all, and bot empower are the next three perks you have. So hasten, when you kill an enemy, you move, I believe, yeah, you and your nearby allies have increased movement speed for five seconds and it's a 20 second duration or a cooldown. That's why I was like, you know, I'm not even going to worry about hasten because five seconds is not that long, in my opinion. Um, one for all is a nice one to have if you're doing more PvE content up, content stuff, like arc falls and whatnot, when there's a bunch of players near you. So that's why, like, when you increase the, the range, though, it's not that big of a range, five meters. Um, I believe it's more than that, actually. I think my game is just being bugged out right now because I'm pretty sure it goes up to, like, 15 meters uh, but yeah, the further you have it, the more allies you can pick up. You can pick up more than one ally with when you revive one ally. And then you have bot empower. On healing a player, your bot gives them a buff that increases their fire rate for five seconds. So this is also a really good one to have if you have players using like an SMG or a sticky or grenade launchers or even assault rifles, pretty much anything, because your fire, rate of fire is just increasing, making you hit a lot faster for those five seconds. So the last two abilities, you have Revive Spike and Ego Refresh. So Revive Spike, the way it works is, it's not gonna automatically pick you up, but when you are inside the Revive Spike, it's just like the, uh, the Defense Spike or the Protection Spike. It's the, pretty much the same, the same radius. Um, but the way it works is you would drop your revive spike on the ground and then players would go inside the revive spike and then they would get a free revive self-revive. 
so they wouldn't use their own self-revive. So when they die after they use the self-revive or the free self-revive, they'll still have their own. And then Ego Refresh. So with Ego Refresh, what it does is it reduces the cooldown for your abilities and your allies' abilities as well. So this is a really good um, ability to have if you are focused on giving a buff, not really focused on revives. If you're focused on just doing buffs, I would highly recommend using Ego Refresh. So that way, not only yourself and your allies, but or not only your allies, but so you can respawn your healing bots and you can respawn either the, def uh, the protection spike or your inspired. So that's pretty much it with all of the abilities. Um, everything, everything that I just went over. Obviously, I didn't show any gameplay because this is just to show you guys what each class has to offer. Um, maybe in the future i'll show some gameplay of each class when i get them all maxed out but for now you know hopefully this video helps you out for people who are starting out if you guys already have already been playing and you chose your class obviously this wouldn't really help you that much but for those of you that are just starting out that haven't even chose a class yet because you're just wondering then you can see what each ability has to offer or a class has to offer so that's pretty much it. This is all Danny Day 1 on the PS4. Have a good day. Good night. And peace. <laughs>